Mm -hmm. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line Through a land so wide and savage And make a Northwest Passage to the sea Westward from the Davis Strait is there, t'was said to lie, the sea route to the Orient for which so many died, seeking gold and glory, leaving weathered broken bones and a long forgotten lonely cairn of stones. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line Through a land so wide and savage And make a northwest passage to the sea. Three centuries thereafter, I take passage over land. In the footsteps of brave Kelso, where his sea of flowers began. Watching cities rise before me. Then behind me sink again This tardiest explorer Driving hard across the plain Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line Through a land so wide and savage And make a northwest passage to the sea And through the night behind the wheel The mileage clicking west I think upon Mackenzie David Thompson and the rest Who cracked the mountain ramparts And did show a path for me To race the roaring Fraser to the sea Ah, oh, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line Through a land so wide and savage And make a northwest passage to the sea How then am I so different from the first men through this way? Like them, I left a settled life, I threw it all away. To seek a northwest passage at the call of many men, to find there but the road back home again. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line Through a land so wide and savage And make a northwest passage to the sea. The late, great 
Stan Rogers, Northwest Passage. You're listening to the Garden Sessions, Garden Sessions. UK. Contact podcast at garden sessions. UK. We're also available on Radio Brit Folk at Radio Brit Folk. UK and ninety eight point eight FM in the Edinburgh area, Leith FM, where Leith apparently lives. Uh, I'm Jack Foster, and with me, the Franklin and Kelso of the folk scene. <laughs> I'm talking, of course, of Tom Harland and Dave the Angles Gimbal. I think, given my heritage, I'll have to be Kelso Angles on this one. Well, that's fine. Either choice is bad. Mm. We both die in the end. <laughs> what happens? Uh, we freeze to death on the ice. Angles, your folky knowledge never ceases to amaze. What's coming up in the show? All the usual stuff. We've got the folky news. We've got uh, Dave's Angle. We've got the top ten, as always. Uh, we've got a featured artists. Any hints week. on the top ten? What's happening with the top ten this week? Can we tease them? Uh, we've got three re-entries, three new entries, a couple of movers, a couple of non-movers. A couple of shakers. Yeah. <laughs> and the angle, any hints? <laughs> no, God, no. <sighs> you see, yeah, there was a time when we did get hints we got wee, the angle. wee hints. Just little ones, but no, he just refuses these days. <laughs> um, Tom... The featured artist this week is uh, Susanna MacDonald, mm-hmm. a singer-songwriter who plays Cajun Royal Oak and has been gigging around Edinburgh, had some time out to have a baby, but's back with a vengeance, and we'll be hearing from her later on. And next next show... Next week? Are we already looking ahead yeah, to next week's featured artist? Yeah, we're already looking next week as well. We'll have Jed Milroy mm. and some tales from his exploits on Richard Branson's Isle. And the suicidal donkey, which <laughs> bit his shoulder. <laughs> that's all that's coming up. Something to look for, but that's in two weeks' time. Episode 29, that'll be. But let's storm on with the show. Tom, next tune. Next tune is Corrine Polwart with Follow the Heron. The back of the winter is broken And light lingers long by the door And the seeds of the summer have spoken In gowns that bloom on the shore By night and day we'll sport and we'll play and delight As the dawn dances over the bay Sleep blows the breath of the morning These bones that lie empty and hollow Are ready for gladness to cheer By night and day we'll sport and we'll play and delight As the dawn dances over the day Sleep blows the breath of the morning Kareen Polwart, one of my personal favourites there. Jack, Kareen Polwart. 
Kareem Polwart, the next time you can see Kareem Polwart, who obviously played in Malinke and uh, also used to play regularly in the Royal Oak, the Grand Old Opry Folk. What album was that song from? I believe it was from Fault Lines. Fault Lines. A fantastic album. Mm. And uh, if you want to see Kareem, though, the next time you'll be able to catch her, um, contrary to popular belief, there was a lot of um, murmurs in the folk scene that she would stop gigging completely mm. um, to have a until baby. September to have a baby. But it seems that she's still gigging. And uh, Sunday the twenty. Sunday the 29th of April in Glasgow at the Tramway, the Triptych Festival. You can see her there. It's a day-long series of events celebrating the ballads of the book, music, poetry, CD. Uh, and she'll good. be collaborating with Roddy and Rod from Idlewild. More info to follow on that. That's the next time you can see Corrine Polwart. Tom? It's news! It's folk! What is it, Tom? It's the folk in you! And the Folky News brought to you this week, as ever, in association with Paddy Bart's Wee Folk Club. Well, every Sunday night at the Oak, we've got the Wee Folk Club at 8.30, an intimate venue, 30 seats, acoustic. It's a great night out. We've got fantastic musicians and uh, singers. Every Sunday night, do come along. Sunday the 15th at the Wee Folk Club, it's Stuart Hardy and Frank McLaughlin. Top-class fiddle and guitar music rooted in the traditions of the Scottish Borders and Northumberland. You're listening to the Garden Sessions, www.gardensessions.co.uk. Cayley Culture is Edinburgh's annual showcase of traditional arts held in the spring of it each year. It describes itself as a showcase of the best homegrown talent alongside acts from across the world with local performers as well as international stars from all sectors of the traditional arts. 2007 sees around 30 organisations in over 30 venues across the city with 154 individual performances, concerts, workshops and classes in traditional Mm. song, music, dance and storytelling. It does on paper. The Garden (laughs) Sessions, however, has seen a growing number of voices within the Edinburgh folk scene who feel that either Cayley Culture has lost its way or never was on the right tracks at all. Jack, our roving reporter, spoke to Kirsty Lingard, regular session musician in Sandy Bells in the Royal Oak, mm. and asked her how she felt the festival impacted on Edinburgh and the scene in general. I've mainly been at the sessions, at the opening concert and at the Pleasance. It's been OK. Um, it's a very different sort of session, a kind of an old-fashioned type session. A lot of singing and older people playing spoons and such like. It does kind of feel a bit behind the times at some points. I think it's quite disappointing in some ways because you're not getting the goodness of the Edinburgh musicians. You're not using that to its full potential. It just doesn't compare to most festivals really in the whole of Scotland at all. Certainly not that there's not enough artists. There's there's plenty of professional artists and people like myself who go around sessions and do Kayleys and gigs. The management, I think, and the organisation is just a wee bit backwards and they're looking towards the past and not the future and the present. It makes me feel quite sad that we. this is our representation of festival for Edinburgh and it's quite dismal. A damning indictment of Cayley culture by Kirsty <laughs> Lingard. Um, and one of the regular venues in the programme is the Royal Oak on Infirmary Grand Street, Edinburgh. Opry. We've heard of it before. Um, Ivor Burney oversees the acclaimed Sunday afternoon instrumental sessions and is the organiser of the Royal Oak Folk Festival charity Folkathon. More on that coming up next. And he gave us his take on Cayley Culture. I've been disappointed with uh, the way Cayley Culture uh, has taken off by using bigger venues and they should concentrate on smaller venues. I mean, we're a venue for Cayley Culture, but with only uh, the folk, the wee folk club and the traditional music, uh, one session extra to what we would normally have uh, during the whole of Cayley Culture. And the wee folk club's been going for nearly 10 years now, and it's a standard Sunday issue, so it wouldn't have made any difference whether that had been part of the Cayley Culture or not. Ivor Burney seems to reckon the... Uh, Cayley Culture's lost its way there. Angles, what are your opinions? Uh, well, the popular opinion uh, seems to be that uh, Cayley Culture has kind of done this thing where they've gotten away from the roots of, of the Edinburgh folk scene. They have, they've just brought in a load of big acts and stuck them into any old venue where they could get them. Hmm. Hmm. I think there's just there's less of a, a feeling on the on the scene that anyone's so much a part of it. It's, it seems to be a smaller hmm. crowd. Seems to be the general consensus. Doesn't seem to have the buzz that surrounded Celtic connections through in Glasgow. Possibly due to a lack of funding, though, because I think funding often gets diverted in the Glasgow direction hmm. for these sorts of That's things. Could be true as well. Moving on with the folky news, the Royal Oak Folk Festival was launched in true folky style with five times Garden Sessions number one. 
five times. Andy Chung. Will he still be at number one? Angles, any hint? Oh. Any ideas? No, 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 no. <laughs> Is he in the chart? I'm not telling you. Oh. He was the first of 12 artists, including six former Garden Sessions featured artists, who played an hour each for the annual charity Focathon. In all, the event raised £400 for the Sick Kid ho- Hospital, 84 up on last year. So congratulations to the Royal Oak for that. Indeed. Amongst those artists who took part were Colin McKenzie, David Ferrard, Alex Moran, Ian Willis um, and the musicians from Sandy Bells, Lords of the Bothy, Poachers 2, Ewan Forfer, Roscoe Galloway, Alan Hunter, Martin Boland and Neil Thompson. Who are those Lords of the Bothy guys? <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, the lineup for 2007's Border Gathering has been announced and includes Catherine Tickell, Laurie Watson and Lilius Kinsman Blake. The, bo- the Border Gathering is a weekend of traditional music teaching workshops held in the beautiful and historic borders town of Coldstream. The town is a perfect setting for this event, halfway between Edinburgh and Newcastle, right on the border on the banks of the magnificent Tweed, in sight of the wild Cheviot Hills, surrounded by historic places such as Kelso Abbey, Norham Castle, Flodden Field, and this all sounds rather familiar stately to homes <laughs> such as Manderson, Paxton Floors, good borders such as ourselves. Pieces of land which have been arbitrarily divided up by various lords. Indeed. <laughs> Ever fancy a bit poaching? You didn't hear it on the garden sessions. No, you certainly didn't hear it in the garden <laughs> sessions. I don't know who said that just now, but <laughs> it wasn't any of us. The gathering takes place between the 6th and 8th of May, anyway, and see uh, bordergathering.com for that. Keep up to date with all latest folky news at gardensessions.co.uk forward slash news, and that's the folky news. Cheers, Tom. You're listening to the Garden Sessions, gardensessions.co.uk. Contact us at podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. We're also available, don't forget, on Radio Britfolk at radiobritfolk.co.uk and 98.8 FM in the Edinburgh area, Leith FM. Angles? Where Leith lives. Indeed, it does. <laughs> they told me I had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to listeners from Leith FM. Indeed, yeah. Good to have you with us. In the bothy. Um, feature which is always on every week. Leith FM listeners may not be familiar with it. Angles. The official garden session download chart. The official garden session download chart. This is the official garden sessions download chart based on free downloads from gardensessions.co.uk. At number 10, it's a new entry for Frank Burkett with What She Would Say. And this is interesting because that's actually the video version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lovely video, lovely tune as well. At nine, it's another new entry for Neil Thompson with Jocko Bradisley, the yeah. first Not ever. The, gym, the first forester, the heading of the mark. Sees if that be Jocko Bradisley. Unto him we will draw, we'll draw. Unto him we'll draw. At eight. Did you say the first <laughs> Dave's angle, Dave? I did, yeah. Sorry, I think you got cut off there by the clip. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been known to happen. Uh, itchy trigger fingers, I think, there from the production team. <laughs> At eight, it's a re-entry for Jim Malcolm with Lock Inside. At seven, it's another re-entry for Random Scanton with Hush. At six, it's up four for Laurie Watson Three with Cape on Tree. Four. At five, it's Goodness. another re-entry for John Dignan with Diamonds. Good song. At Good four, song. yet another new entry, Jim Malcolm again with Glenn Logie. Jeannie's gotten married, our talk has been told But the Gino Bethelny was scarce 16 year old Bethelny, oh Bethelny, you shine where you stand And the heather bells around you shine off Fabie's land Bethelny, oh Bethelny, you shine where you stand And the heather bells around you shine off Fabie's land Tune. Indeed it is, yeah. At three, it's down one for Andy Chung with the wee room. At two, it's a one-two or two-three at least because it's down one again for Andy Chung. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No. Yes, indeed. Down one for Chung. The penny falls is down at number two. From number one again. He's been knocked off of number one. (laughs) Yes, uh, that means there's a new number one, and uh, it's a band that have been in the charts a few times. They've kind of been dancing around the top ten. They've never ever quite made it. Stop teasing me. They finally got there. I can tell you now, the official Garden Sessions number one yeah. is up four for the Laurie Watson three with Where Maggie Gangs Away. Good lord.
night was he Put Hattie's chain to bed for a tunnelly And into tea And Sandy's gain and tea the kirk And learning fast to pray And oh, what will the lads do When Maggie gangs FM in the Edinburgh area. Leith FM, which, Tom, is where Leith lives. It does indeed. We're also available on Radio Britfolk.co.uk. It's the Garden Sessions, garden sessions.co.uk, and contact us, please do, at Dave. Podcast at garden sessions.co.uk. That was the Laurie Watson 3, formed in 2004, award winners at Celtic Connections from their album Colon 3. (laughs) And. uh, that song's called When Maggie Gangs Away. Beautiful song. It's an amazingly good song. And it's the Garden Sessions number one. 
mm. this week. The gold standard. The gold standard. Um, very good choice from our listeners, I would say. Angles, have we had any updates on Willie's Gone to Melville Castle? The none, challenge that Andy None at Chung all. None that I've pooped. seen or been made aware of, unless you're holding something no. back from me. Nope, nothing. But Andy Chung put this challenge to listeners of the Garden Sessions to find out who wrote Willie's Gone to Melville Castle, and we've had no leads. Angles, I know you've been doing a lot of reading. Has nothing turned up? Your time spent among dusty Not a great tones. deal. Um, I'm going to start trying to approach it from places other than with Willie's Gone to Melville Castle or Melville Such Castle. Such as witchcraft. The reason I bring it up is because you suggested that it was very similar to that song that we just heard there. I, yeah, well, it Which sounds is the only kind of lead that similar. you've really pulled together. Similar kind of story. Mm. Anyway, talking of stories and songs and folk in general and yourself, Angles, it's your angle. That's right, Jack. Indeed it is. It's time again. I dread it every two weeks. For you to <laughs> rip apart the <laughs> traditional folk so Indeed, and this time the song is Edward of Morton, performed here by Emily Smith. Martin, written by Emily Smith. Great song from her album A Different Life. Fantastic and it's our, recording. Yeah, and it's our Dave's Angle for this week. Dave, what's your angle? Mm-hmm. Well, the uh, song starts off uh, with Lady Morton. And <laughs> does she's, it indeed? Uh, it does, yes, as always. Um, with Lady Morton, she's sitting in her chamber. She's up in, in one of the towers of the castle. 
um, and she's combing her hair like she does every single day, just, just a normal, normal day. average every day. Yeah, okay. Um, and her servant Edward is standing outside the door, mm-hmm. standing in the hall, just waiting. You know, waiting until she asks him to go and grab her a sandwich or something. Right. Um, and he's thinking about his girlfriend Agnes and uh, well, his fiance Agnes and 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 what's going to happen on their wedding. Right, so the servants engaged to be married. He and is. Yeah. Lady and Morton's just his boss. Yeah. Normal day. Yeah, normal average every day until oh, okay. Lady Morton turns to Edward and she says, uh, "Do you want to just uh, do you want to just hang around? Do you want to stay with me? Maybe uh, um, mm, we could go out and sinister. have a wee walk by the woods, uh, by the loch, something like that. You know, it could be nice. Could maybe get something going." And Edward turns right. No, 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 no. Definitely not. I couldn't Definitely think that. no. Definitely no. No, I've got a fiance. You know, I'm going to be true to her. Gonna keep it kosher, not a chance. It's not she, worth it. Is she a bit of a Mrs. Robinson type character, Dave? A little bit. She's trying to. Um, we don't quite know why she's trying to seduce him, but she does anyway. This well, very normal of days. She tries to seduce him. Yes. Okay. Um, does she? And succeed? she says, "Well, hold on a second. You know, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you've got to. You've got to do what I tell you. And if you don't, <laughs> it's going to be trouble. You know. Oh, he's off. If you don't, you, you, you come to bed with me, essentially, she says, or I'll go and tell my husband that you're the one that made advances. Right, right. well, that's not on, for starters. Lady Mor- Morton's bang out of order there. She, yeah, she's in the, the bad books now. Blackmail yeah. for sex with one of the servants is it's, not It's on. really not fair. Exploitative. It's Where's their unions? Yeah. Sexual harassment charges could well, be Well, they were servants, against. some. They didn't have unions. Okay, Angles. So she threatens him. She threatens him. Uh, and uh, and he says, no, no, we'll not have any of that. No, nope. no matter how many threats you make, it's not going to happen. Just no, there's no point. And she carries she her threat. Guns. She carries her threat out. Oh. Basically, she says to her husband, "Look, this is what's happened. It's not on. What are you going to do about it?" And her husband goes nuts, as you'd expect. If you know, if some, if it comes to you making advances, even if it's a blatant lie. Well, he doesn't know it's a it's a lie, does he? Obviously, I mean, as far as he's concerned, it's all above board. So he sort of he he goes mental and, and locks uh, locks Edward up, <laughs> throws him in the darkest dungeon Gosh. can possibly be found, with no hope of ever escape. Um, right. This isn't obviously to, to Edward's liking. No, well, it, it's Dark. completely uh, unjust. But he's he's down there for a while, and eventually. Uh, it becomes not to necessarily to Lady Morton's liking. You know, she's spent a lot of time with him. She's been surreptitiously sort of sneaking down and feeding him a wee bit of food to keep him alive because she's realised what she's done is wrong. Right. And Why eventually the guilt gets... Yeah, well, tell the truth or something. But she can't do that, obviously. She can't, you know, go back and tell the truth after what she's done. So she goes to Agnes and she uh, says to Agnes, what you got to do is you got to go to the Earl. Who's and Agnes? Got, Agnes is uh, Edward's <laughs> fiance. Okay. <Right>. Sorry. <laughs> Um, what you've got to do is you've got to go to the Earl and you've got to plead with him for, for Edward's freedom. And if you do that, you know, make a real show of it, tears, tantrums, all that kind of stuff, and you might just manage it, you know, you might just melt that icy heart of his. So Agnes goes up to the Earl and she says to the Earl, you know, come on, let him free, pleads with him, cries, you know, down at his feet, all that kind of stuff. Is the Earl buying it? <laughs> no, the Earl gets angry. <sighs> The right. Earl can't see any reason why he should let Edward free because he's done this terrible thing. Never trust the aristocracy. Well, it's not the Earl's fault. <laughs> is that the only I, No, I want to. St- I want to state now, for the record, it's not the Earl's fault. The Earl no, has isn't. been told it's that Lady Mark. that the, that the Edward was making advances. Yeah, still. Um, and uh, he decides that obviously being kept alive in the dungeons isn't punishment enough for Edward. So what he's going to do is he's just going to knock this all on the head. Takes him down into town and ties him to the two wildest horses he can find. Oh, my word. And then sets the horses running, and the horses sky off. He obviously whips yeah. them or, or, or shoots a shot in the air or something, scares them. The horses sky off down the road, dragging Edward behind them along the pavement. Good God. Um, um, right. So, yeah, Edward's dragged Edward along to his death. Ride, and much. all that's left to, to show for it is a gravestone, which, conveniently enough, is placed exactly where Edward's head fell off. <laughs> Word. Does Lady Martin not Dark get a comeuppance? Zone. No. No one gets a comeuppance. Oh, God. Edward gets an entirely undeserved comeuppance, but that's uh, the only <laughs> uppance that comes throughout this entire saga. Emily Smith writes a good song, but she writes a dark song. <laughs> a da- she does. A dark <laughs> What's the moral, Angus? Uh, the moral of this one is that, well, essentially it's a sort of 
uh, Lady Morton moral. It's if you go and cry wolf, tell lies, then eventually someone's going to get in trouble for it, and trust me, you're going to feel guilty. <laughs> I hope she did. Yeah, I should imagine she would. Dave, is that your anger? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. And with Dave's angle out the way, we could move <laughs> on to the letters bag, and we're still jingleless. No sign of Frank's uh, jingle for the letters bag, but I'm sure that it'll happen at some point down the line. Um, I'll, I'll take on the first one, shall I? Go for it. I do your garden sessions. Just wanted to say that not only am I new to the sessions, the sessions, you see, that's abbreviation. <laughs> <laughs> We've made it. <laughs> <laughs> but a complete folky novice. Love the podcasts, Dave's Angle especially, and downloads, etc. A perfect way to introduce myself to the great sounds of true folk music. Thanks, guys. Oh, no so problem at all. This guy isn't a folky. He's a folky novice. Who yeah. is the, Who is this Does guy? Does that make us who, revolutionary? Who is this letter from, the se- Jack? second revival starts in the sessions. <laughs> Who's the letter from, Jack? Ed. Who is this? Ed from Bedfordshire. Ed from Bedfordshire. <laughs> well, thank you. I've got a, um, a request here from a Ruri from Dunkeld. Um, which says, Dear Garden Sessions, I was looking through your back catalogue of episodes Don't know what Angus is talking about and really they. fancied <laughs> hearing some David Rovix in- the David Rovix interview, but unfortunately noticed that it's no longer available for, do- for download. Will you ever be playing it again? Not a chance. Jack. It's just the harsh reality of the Garden Sessions that after three months the episode's no longer available. Mm. Um, you get three months, though. But if you email... If you email through, we can probably sort something out. But um, David Rovix is one of those artists that I can't help but feel that we'll probably play that feature again at I'm some sure point. I'm sure we'll be hearing future. some more not from if, David Not if Rovix. I can help it. Obviously not if Angles can help it, but at some point in the near future. And uh, but Anyway, the email for Ruri would be podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. Indeed it would, nice. and that would um, be the best place to go. And anyone who wants to have a letter in the letters bag, please send us. Podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. All your feedback, your everything that you've got to say, what you think of the show, etc. Our featured artist is coming up in just a moment. Um, remind us who our featured artist is on the next show. Uh, the featured artist on the next show, which I'm particularly excited about, is going to be mm. Jed Milroy. Um, Jed Milroy. He's a genius guy. He always is jolly and upbeat and energetic. Uh, and it comes through in the music and it's really quite... It puts a smile on your face listening to it, essentially. And we have heard him before in the garden sessions. We played mm. I Will Worship Nothing um, a wee while back. A we did. Fantastic song. And a little bird tells me that that song features in his featured artist slot oh, next look time to it. But maybe not like you've ever heard it before. Indeed. Tom, our featured artist this week, though. Our featured artist this week is Susanna MacDonald. Mmm. Mm. Susanna MacDonald joins me now, uh, this week's featured artist on the Garden Sessions. Hello, Susanna. Hello. Good to have you with us. Um, you've been on the Edinburgh singer-songwriter scene for a few years now. Um, apparently had a big year in 2005, and um, but you've not been in Edinburgh constantly over that time. Uh, no. I, uh, I was... Yeah, I, I come from Edinburgh, and then mm. I started sort of songwriting when I was 15, and I was atrocious... But um, I interspersed. Surely not. Uh, yes, I interspersed um, sort of my time in Edinburgh with living in Cambridge and London. I lived mm-hmm. in London on and off for five years. So, how did you find that the scene in London compares to that up here? I think the scene in Edinburgh is quite remarkable, and I don't think you'll find it anywhere else. There's so much talent, and there's so many different styles as mm-hmm. well, and no one's afraid to be themselves. Whereas in London. It seems that most people are trying to pander to what they think the record industry wants to hear. Yeah. And at the moment, that tends to be an awful lot of lo-fi stuff. I'm trying to reach out to specific kind of markets and audiences and so on. Yeah, rather than being sort of original. And so you would say that there definitely is a market for original stuff? Um, well, personally, I think so, but I get I get incredibly bored with most of the stuff <laughs> I listen to. <laughs> so, well, the most of the stuff that, that's on the radio, so... And um, you say that the scene in Edinburgh and I suppose in Scotland to an extent um, can't really be beaten elsewhere. Would you say that it's expanding at the moment, or I mean th- that it's getting bigger? Well, from benefit of having seen it for the past nine years, um, 
I wouldn't say it's expanding. I th- I'd say it's been constant because people are, con- you know, always sort of give up and go off and yeah. have families or get proper jobs. But Edinburgh is a, is a big travel spot for people as well. Yeah. So you get a lot of Kiwis, Australians, and South Africans and Americans mm-hmm. coming coming through, and they're only here for a f- limited period of time. So. And you mentioned there are people giving up and going off to have families. Um, you've not given up, uh, but you've um, started a family. Yes, I am lucky in the respect that I have a very, very supportive partner mm-hmm. who um, I think would probably kill me rather than let me give up. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's the only thing that actually keeps me doing it because, um, like every songwriter, I have a very fragile fragile ego yeah. and crisis of confidence on a regular basis. So, <laughs> so you managed to keep it going with an 11-month-old baby? Um, well, I've had... I've had quite a bit of a break. Yeah. I was playing quite regularly up until I had him and yeah, and it's it's quite tough to get back into because the scene does turn over quite quickly and there's only a mm. few die hard people that no one knows who you are anymore. No. It's <laughs> easy to follow the loop. In a way, in a way it can be good if you weren't very good before and you come back, you mm. sort of reinvent yourself and <laughs> no one has an idea what anything what you were like. But you're back with a vengeance anyway on the scene. Well, trying to yeah, yeah. So. well we'll listen to their second song and we'll talk a little bit more about your songwriting and your approaches to that afterwards well I could hide behind the clouds the metaphors that bring the storms of my world and never seem to say anything that's positive Well I could sing those similes that say you're like the cure to some fatal disease that I've been living with all my life But I've never been able to sing such happy things they are But for you I try And I just have to tell the microphone That I love you Then I won't have to wear too long Before I'm singing you a love song I try and Just like a sugar-coated pill, but in 
makes me ill and then I'm right back at the start Cause you don't need grand gesturing Susanna MacDonald, uh, this is a love song, um, and Susanna's still with me now, the featured artist this week on the Garden Sessions. That was an original song that uh, we just had there, but it tells a little bit about your, the songwriting process uh, as you would approach it. Well, it's changed over um, over the years. I used to, well, I suppose it always still starts with an idea of something mm. that I'd like to write about. Um, but I know a lot of people, they'll think of lyrics first or they'll they'll find a tune first or they'll find a guitar part first and it just depends it depends on the actual song I've, mm. I've written some got the whole thing at once in in my head sort of I used to find walking home was very good for that but um mm. other times I find the guitar part and then I try and try and try till I get some lyrics for it <laughs> those are kind of a couple of years in pro progress but um I think that particular one I had the lyrics for first mm. Mm. Do you f so do you find it an easy process once you, well, if you're following a pattern that you would normally follow to write a song, do you find it easier? Do you find it a struggle every time? It depends. Um, after having my baby, I didn't write anything. I didn't write anything during my pregnancy. Mm. I, well, I did start to write something, and then someone turned around and said, "Oh, you just can't write a song about having a baby because it's never done very well. It always comes off really twee." <laughs> so I abandoned anything that I was doing and ended up not writing anything till um, I think Whiskey Soap was actually the first one starting writing again. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it was getting the first one out because it had been a couple of years and after that it sort of, it's been writing again. But then I've got more time because he's getting older. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that's us nearing the end of our time in the featured artist slot. Um, we're going to finish up with a song called Succubus. <laughs> Expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> Succubus. Um, this was one that I had the line, I thought of the line for about a year before I wrote the song. Um, I thought the succubus keeps sucking you dry. And it's not dodgy, though a succubus is a female sexual demon. It's not about that. Right. <laughs> it was about um, someone who had a major impact on my life. Um, an old friend came back into my life after seven years and um, it brought up a lot of things from the past and it's also about kind of when you go a bit mental and mm -hmm. you start talking things over to yourself and trying to relive conversations. Well, we'll hear that now. <laughs> Thanks very much, um, Susanna MacDonald, for joining us this week. I understand you're entering the Royal Oak Songwriting Competition. Best of luck with that. Thank anyway. you. Thanks very much, Susanna MacDonald. Thank you. Somewhere in this town So take it away Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I relive all those times 
times and the things I then said Tuck into the air I can't tell what's real or what's just in my head So give it away Cause there's nobody left here to pay for the trouble I brought and now brought upon myself. I'm the succubus that keeps sucking you. Devils and I'm on the pure to tempt them to the other side. We all have demons and at least I don't hide. I'm a demon through and through, but surely to be this bad somewhere there must be something good. So take it All those times and the things I've then said Tuck into the ear I can't tell What's real or what's just in my head So give it away Cause there's nobody left here to pay For the trouble I've brought and now brought Upon my saying Succubus. Susanna McDonald, a great featured, uh, artist. featured artist this week on the Garden Sessions podcast. 
And there we are. Oh, it's that yeah. time again. It just <laughs> sneaks round. Really fast, actually. It sneaks up too fast, some might say. Too fast. Mm. It seems like we've only been going for half an hour. All yeah. good things must come to an end, though. I'm getting the most terrible feeling of deja vu. Yeah, well, it has happened 28 times, Angles. <laughs> um, episode 29 is next time round, uh, in two weeks' time. Who's our featured artist then, Angles? That's uh, Jed Milroy. Mm. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, we managed to snag him. We did. The The feature's already been recorded. It's in the bank. It's definitely coming next time. Tom, I think you spoke to him, did you know? Mm, I caught up with Jed today. I said spoke. I meant caught up with. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> He's a right. very fast runner. <laughs> right, Angles, how can you contact the Garden Sessions? If you want to contact us, it's podcast at gardensessions.co.uk or you can go to the feedback form on the website, which is gardensessions.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Where there's also lots of free music to download of this very show. And you can get the show from radiobritfolk.co.uk and Tom? From 98.8 FM. In the Leith Edinburgh area. FM, where Leith lives. Where does Leith live? At Leith FM. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I'm Jack Foster um, with me Tom Harlan and Dave the Angles Gimbal. Uh, till next time round, um, have a lovely couple of weeks. And uh, this has been the Garden Sessions. Take it easy. Catch you later down the Folky Trail. Cheerio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.